you a new or returning player to Dragon City or just someone that wants to make sure that they are up to speed with all of the latest information and best guidance on stuff in the game? Well, you are in luck because when it comes to anything Dragon City, there are a lot of little things that you'll need to know, same as any video game. And over time, these things have changed. We had mythical update, we had speed update. But today I wanted to share with you I guess a resource or the main resource that I use to make sure that I have all the latest information that I can spread to other people. And if you want to find this yourself, it is actually in the Dragon City chat section of my Discord server. And we have these pinned messages and on PC, you can see them in the top hand corner, but on mobile, you have to click the channel name and then go to the pins to see these. But the reason why I wanted to go through these is because these pins give a lot of incredibly useful information and I wanted to go through each of these so that everyone has some sort of idea of the sort of resources that we have available. So, for instance, if you ever want to know how much a Dragon Rescue costs and what the cooldowns are on it, which is mainly something that new players will be interested in because you have to go from common all the way up to legendary, this resource, this little image here uh, that has been taken from, I believe, King ADC 111 a long time ago uh, because we just pin anything that is useful and, you know, shout outs go out to anyone that created any of this content in the first place so that we can share it with everyone. Uh, but things like this are useful to know, but like it's not the end of the world if you don't know exactly how many keys go into a rescue. But it tells you that, for instance, for Legendary, the entry cost is 5, the first door is 20 keys, the second door is 35 keys, and costs a total of 60 keys, with a cooldown of 8 hours. But if you can complete a Legendary rescue without breaks like me, there is no cooldown. But it's going to be very relevant if you are a new player going through all of this. So that is the first resource. The second one, we actually have the arena table all, I guess, filled out here. And even though you can see this in game, some people find it useful to just have this on hand so that they can check what the upcoming element bans and things are going to be. And obviously in game, it tells you whether your attack's been negated or anything else. But if you take a look at the actual elemental table, there are a couple of interesting things to note that may help you when you are considering elements and things like that, because you're going to need every single element on your team regardless. Uh, but just a couple of interesting things that you might see from this is that from pure up to time when they were released, you'll see that there's only one super effective and one half damage for each of them. And also from pure and all the way through to the ancient world elements, there is no negation. So for instance, if you try and use Terra, it negates Terra, Flame negates Flame, yada yada yada. But there is none of that with these elements here. So that is another thing, just a little tidbit or an interesting thing to note. And just analyzing this a little bit more might just give you a little bit more of a heads up. But don't expect to remember all of this if you've just returned to the game and Ancient World Elements, which Ancient World Elements is this one on the right from the time element. So in this green section on the far right corner, they're all the ancient world elements. And it took me like a week to start remembering all of these, but we've got happy, chaos, magic, soul, beauty, and dream. Uh, but you'll get to know those as you play the game a bit more, assuming that you keep playing, of course, but it's an interesting little thing to have. Uh, the next one that we've got here, this is also not the most important thing ever, and I'm sure there are a few other combinations that we have these days because we do have the single element breedables as well. But if you don't have any of the single element ancient world breedable dragons, you can actually use this little listing here uh, because you can get two element dragons out of the ancient world section, which I've not touched in months, but you can actually get specific ancient world breedings for these dragons here and it tells you what the combination would be. Again, it's very slightly going to be different these days because we've got tons of ancient world dragons these days and single element ones. If you don't have any of the single element ones, you can still use this resource. And I think it's cool to see what the old listing used to be. Secret fire is used for some breeds for people that have timer skips as well. So there is another one. But either way, that is still pinned there and I keep it there because it's interesting to see. We have this one here, and I can't remember who created this one, uh, but you'll see that this is actually a little guide on the vampires and what each of the vampires do. 
And, you know, I've been considering maybe making a version of this with the most up-to-date information and for each of the VIP families, but specifically with families like, you know, vampires, where every single one of them has a different secondary skill. We also have the spike dragons that are all different. We've got berserkers that are all different. Whereas other families, they all have, you know, the same skills. But with the vampires, for instance, if you've ever wondered what each of the vampires do and you're not quite into the game enough to remember all of them, it tells you that, for instance, Prideful, Reckless Victory loses 25% of remaining health for huge C damage. And the common shared element between all of these dragons, including High Voodoo, is the Leech Fang, which steals health points from the enemy. And some of these resources, again, if they're a bit older, they might be very slightly off in terms of a little bit of information, but for the most part, they are relatively accurate and it will give you a very good overview of what each of these dragons do. Hexed Vampire up there, it says Hex Agony hits three to six times with a dark attack and that is what she does. So that is another really useful, handy one. It used to be more relevant when people used to pick up uh, vampires incredibly easily. I mean, they're still not super hard to get, but this used to be more relevant to brand new players that were summoning their first vampire, but if you manage to get one, you can still use this and it would be handy. So, next one that we've got on our list here was one that I made quite a long time ago now, but this is actually every single one of the tower dragons. And, you know, when I go on my island, like, I can go over there and I can see it in the info section or the dragon section and it tells me. But if you're someone that hasn't actually unlocked the towers yet and, like, say, for instance, you don't even see this dragon over here and you don't see Fawn over here, which is the breeding dragon, like, you're not even going to know that they exist. And so that is why I created this, uh little infographic that has put all of them together. So if you go, okay, what the heck does Fawn do? It says here, a higher chance of a rare breed for two hours, although it boosts it, I, based, I believe it's still based on empowerment. Uh, Fawn's a bit of a weird one. Brood Bee and Demona are my favorite tower dragons, along with Speedy and Greedy. But for instance, Demona skips six hours on all breedings. Brood Bee skips six hours in the hatchery. And Speedy and Greedy collects all resources automatically. But all of these tower dragons do have their uses, and you will have to use them in order to get some of your um, season points for like insignias and such. I use most of them when they are available and Hanzo has a shorter cooldown of two days but you'll see like the breeding skip, the hatchery skip is a six day cooldown which in my opinion I think is very outdated. They could like halve these and make them a lot better but they've just sort of left them alone for a long time. But if you want to know what they all do you can go and read them and see all of them and I think Hanzo looks cool anyway. So there is that one. Uh, the next one we've got here is one provided by someone and I will say that I don't think this is super important to know but it does tell you the max gold capacity for each habitat uh, but I don't think gold capacity is very important and that might shock some brand new players like what but we need gold for everything and yes you do uh, but the main way that you'll get bonus food is probably not going to be from farming most of the time because especially during events like heroic race you're going to be farming like these really really short timer foods anyway the actual thing that you're going to be getting food from is primarily going to be alliance chests so for instance we've got our current alliance chest which gives 11.3 million food for me because of my player level and you'll also get lots of food from events like runner maze events and so on so yes, while you can plant the long food in the farms, I don't actually think it is that important. And then therefore you don't need millions and trillions of gold. Most of the time, I just have far too much gold. And then when I occasionally do the longer food timers, so for instance, if I go for interstellar fruit, I can do that sometimes for like puzzle events, but it's not something that you have to be doing all the time. If you've got enough gold by stacking up on all of these habitats, you can do that, but it's really not essential. So, moving on from that, that was just a runner event score, that's not important. I have posted about these before, but I do have the time and the legendary dragon breeding outcomes, and this is just like a short infographic that shows you what you get if you breed legend and sea, legend and war, legend and wind, you know, considering how many elements we have, just a 
quick image of the dragons that you can get out of it. So if you see one and you go, oh, he looks cool. I want him. How do I get him? There you go. You know that if you want Valentine, you're going to need Chaos and Legend. And it is in power exclusive level one. So there's just a couple of these sort of infographics here. I did used to use the time element breeding one myself a lot when I was going for lots of unique dragons and also for some specific breeds with time element. But, you know, it's not like the most important thing in the world. You can see all of these if you throw them into your breeding dens, of course, but you have to know what you're looking to breed first. So if you want to see any of those, I have uploaded whole videos on those two before, but the images are still pinned. So we have a really interesting one here, which I think this one is slightly outdated, but it'll give you a very rough idea of how the categories in this game work. And I have mentioned it a few times. Uh, but we've got category for a dragon, the rarity of the dragons that have it typically, the max health and the max power based on category. Because if you're not clear on what the difference is in terms of the dragons in the game. So if I go into the codex, right, we can search by dragons of a specific rarity. So that the heroic, mythical, legend, for instance. But like if I go to heroic, the reason why picking up any heroic in the game isn't actually a bad idea, even if they're not a heroic VIP, is because heroic dragons have the highest category, technically speaking, out of all the non-skinned dragons in the game. And so if we open this up, heroic dragons are category 11 dragons. And again, this is non-skin because skins can change things. But category 11, and you can see how high the max health and the max power is on these dragons. And you can see that for a category 11 heroic, they have the highest health and the highest power. So if you consider all of that, that's why heroics are the best, because they have the best stats. But legendary cat 10 still have a lot of HP and a lot of power. Very, very similar to that of heroic dragons and so that's why we look for category 10 legendaries that also have well it's going to be mythicals these days because we now have mythical uh, but we look for high category dragons that basically means that they're very similar to heroics they're not going to be the same especially not health wise damage wise they can be very similar uh, but category 9 legends as well it's just you've got to remember that now we have legends, mythicals, and heroics. So that is why this one's going to be slightly different to how it used to be. But mythicals are going to be the cat 10 ones. But that's an interesting one if you ever want to look at that one. And then going up, we also have these really, really interesting breedable, uh, I guess, pin sections, which is very similar to the other ones that I showed you. There aren't any images of the dragons themselves, but these images here, they show you how to breed all of these dragons in alphabetical order. So it shows you legendary rarity, normal elements, ancient world elements involved, and it shows you like from Arctic Guardian all the way to World Cup. And we also have a second one of these, and I use these lists a lot. If someone says to me, how the heck do I breed eggshell, the legendary? Well, it's right there. You can go and check it. Or if someone goes, how do I breed fertility? Well, you can go and check it right there. And so I find these to be very, very useful. And if you are going for unique breeds or anything like that, this is a really, really good resource to use. And again, if you want to download any of these, just go into the Dragon City chat. You don't have to chat or do anything else. You can just go to the pins and download all of these image files or guides for yourself. The next one that we've got here is actually related to him heroic empowerment quests. And I can't show this or pop this one out because it is not actually like an image, it's just text. Uh, but this one is usually reposted into our DC event guide section because this goes through the general advice on quest one and quest two of the heroic combat quests. And the heroic combat quests are the quests that at the end of the heroic race so we've got the heroic race here at the end of the race we're going to get heroic combat quests and this essentially goes through how you can complete them what you'll need how many gems what the cooldowns are so this is a really really useful resource and again it's usually reposted into the dc event guide section uh, that's just these are just random posts and then we've got trading happy hour information and so this was a post previously and it says during trading happy hour you can start trades with one essence instead of two so if you've ever heard about uh, uh happy hours before we do have multiple different types of happy hours in this game 
and like usually you can see these in the news section and right now we have the empower happy hour which right now as of recently we've been having empower happy hours on wednesdays and we've been having summon happy hours on fridays but we do also have trading happy hours which happen very rarely and seemingly at random like these used to be uh, but trading happy hours basically mean that if you go to trade with someone like if i went to set up a trade right now and say i set up a heroic trade for high nucleus and high scorch wing it would cost me two heroic essence to set up this trade however during trading happy hour it costs one for everyone and that doesn't seem like a big change but it does make a huge difference when we're talking about specifically heroic but also mythical and legend because it is quite difficult to get essence from events it takes a lot of grinding a lot of time it's become a little bit more common recently with the recent collection events but trading happy hours are going to be prime times for people to be trading and again there's no guarantee of when they're going to happen but it's the same whether you're breeding mythicals, whether I mean, whether you're training mythicals, whether you're training heroics, whether you're training legends. But just be aware that trading happy hours do, in fact, exist, albeit very rare at that. Uh, then we have a funny message there. We do also have what I reposted as a ratio calculator. And this was, I will admit, a little bit of a joke at the time. Uh, but the reason why this is pinned is because you'll see that when people go to set up trades, they'll ask for ratios with people. And so when you're considering what a ratio trade is, it is very simple, basic math. So like if someone says, I want to trade 30 orbs with you for, I don't know, 40, it'll tell you what the ratio is. So you could work it out like that however you have to be aware that when people are talking about one-to-one -one trades in dragon city if it's a cross trade and so what i mean by a cross trade if we're going into trading say you have prideful vampire that you're requesting and someone else is actually going to be giving you a legend in order to do a cross trade like this the prideful you're going to be trading six orbs out and they're going to be trading back seven legend orbs but you can't actually trade mythical for legend so what people do is they'll say request prideful donate a random dragon like found family just any mythical that they don't actually care about and then they'll do a trade with that person and then either they or the other person after they accept this trade they will then go okay the legend that i'm gonna give you back is gonna be do i even have a a legend equivalent that people might trade uh say it would be a dragon like they'd give out duo dust or something and then another random legend but they would do this trade and set up so that then the person gets the legend that they want and then they would trade that but when you're trading out the legend it's seven orbs so when they're talking one-to-one -one between mythicals and legends you've got to remember that the legend is seven orbs and the mythical is six per trade so even though the orb counts might look different it might still be a one-to-one -one trade and so if it gets a bit too much for your brain to handle and a bit too complicated you can use this website to kind of help you uh, but to be honest if you've done maths in school you shouldn't need this uh, that's why this was sort of a joke repost but it is what it is and so i think we've actually got two sets of these pins so i'm not gonna go through that one just now but we do also have this one which i believe is pinned in the official server quite a lot which is essentially all of the quests that we have in the puzzle event not puzzle event what am i talking about yes puzzle event <laughs> I, i'm even getting confused with all the event names and stuff like that uh, but you know the event where you have set quests where you get given the little puzzle bits the candy crush game as we call it uh, yeah these are the puzzle ones so it tells you to breed an egg with the electric element and then going from top to bottom it shows you what the loop is going to be so if you don't want to use ditlep or deetlist or any of the other sites you can just save this image somewhere so right click save image as put it in your folder and open it every time and then you will never ever be confused as to what the next puzzle quest is going to be ever again because they're always exactly the same uh, so that is a useful one to have on tap now this one i have used a lot and i have used many many times and shown it to many people because this relates to empowerment and 
this is very relevant to people because obviously the way that we get good dragons in Dragon City and we have our profiles decked out with E5s is by empowering them. And if you're a new player, it will take a long time to empower your dragons. That's just inevitable. But people do it a lot of the time with Joker Orbs. Either Jokers or they'll trade for Dragon Orbs with someone else. But if you want to know how many Joker Orbs you can use outside of Empower Happy Hour, because inside Empower Happy Hour, you can use as many Jokers as you want. So even if you've got 800 Joker Orbs and you need to empower level five a dragon, if it's Empower Happy Hour, you can just do that. But if it's not inside Empower Happy Hour, if you want a five stars, you can only use up to 240 Joker Orbs, and then the rest have to be the Dragon's basic orbs. So this tells you the cost to Empower for each star. So 120 for uh, star one, 200 Orbs for star two, all the way up to five stars, 800. And if you add all of those up, that comes to 2,000. So it's 2,000 Orbs to Empower any dragon in Dragon City. It tells you what the empowering time is. So, you know, two times the hatching time on a five star, 1.75 times the hatching time of the dragon for a four star. It tells you the max level for each empowerment level. So for instance, at one star, you'd have a level 45 max dragon. At four stars, you'd have a level 60 max. Five stars max is of course level 70. And then this section that talks about Joker Orbs usable outside of the Empower Happy Hour. So all of these are very useful to have and I would always keep this somewhere or keep referring back to it in the server if you need to, but it's a very useful, handy resource that we've picked up over time. Now, this one is also, I think, slightly outdated now, but it will give you a very quick idea of things. And this was apparently by Kadai, uh, but the main thing that you want to take from this is that it is actually a very, very good idea to power level as a player, because you'll see that if you compare the level, say, level 18 to 21 chest, where the max XL food box gives you basically 800,000 food, and then you look at the level 150 to 200 chest, you'd be getting 6.5 million. And so this here shows you basically, if I go to my alliance now, if we were to hit level six chest, which we should, and any six uh, alliance that you're in should be hitting the max level six chest, then you'll see that I'd be getting 11.3 million food. And so we get bonuses on these based on our player level, but this image is talking about the actual food chest that you get from say events and things like that. Uh, but the higher your player level, the more food you get per chest. So basically, as soon as you're able to do your league battles in Dragon City, so like, first of all, you're a new player, you start the game, you need a team that can beat league battles, so you don't power up your player level too high, because league battles are based on player level. And then as soon as you can beat any, any league team in the game without question, then you go over and you start power leveling your player level. You can do this mainly by upgrading and placing habitats. And also hatching dragons does give you some, but the main way that you're gonna get XP is probably gonna be from placing and upgrading habitats. And I got so much XP back when I had loads of space. So definitely if you're trying to power level, upgrade your habitats as much as you can. But it's a very useful resource just so that you know roughly what the difference is between your current level and what you would be getting if you were, say, level 100 plus. So just be aware that this is a thing and it does exist. So next one we've got is this one, which was created a little while ago, and we've actually got the heroic and the legendary version of this, but this shows you what the costs of speed up are. So in case you wanted an actual gem amount, because people like to speed things up for empowerment when it comes to empower happy hour. And we do have a version of this for heroics and legends. And I think it should be similar for the mythicals actually as well. We don't have an upgraded or updated version with mythical rarity, but this should show you pretty much for the heroics, especially what the total cost would be. So this is for each star. So 56 for level one, 60 for empower two, and then 68 empower three, 72 empower four, and then empower five to fully skip the whole thing would be 84 gems, which is incredibly expensive 
and it's the reason why I don't recommend doing this unless you have a quest that's giving back the gems when you do it. Uh, it generally, like I said, it's not a good idea unless you can, you know, achieve a specific purpose by doing it. And so if you do need to achieve a specific purpose by speaking them up, this is how much you should be expecting to pay for each level. So there is that. And like I said, we do have the legendary version there as well, just so that you have an idea. So there is a little bit of text here relating to orb cycling, and I'm just going to go through this in a little bit of brief detail. And so orb cycling, if I go over here to my recall section, you'll see that I'm currently recalling Cosmic Detonation. And this isn't a dragon that I'd recommend doing the orb recall method on. Uh, but this dragon here is level 30. I've recalled him and that's because level 30 is the max level for you to get the maximum amount of orbs out of recall, which is 100. And so what people do in terms of this orb recalling endless looping method, it's also known as, is you'll get a dragon that's a 100 orb dragon. And then this dragon, you will max out its rank or you will take it to say plat one or gold three for the rankings in the game because you know if you go and check a dragon uh like i don't know who has some of these but like we've got wrong hole here and we could check our rank up so how many ko's we have and so what a lot of people do they'll roughly take a dragon either to gold three or they'll go all the way up to platinum three with 100 orb dragons they'll get a duplicate dragon and then they will recall one of those dragons because this means that each of these you'll see it shows you how many bonus orbs you get so if you get plat one you get plus eight plat two you get another plus eight orbs for this dragon all the way up to platinum three for all of these bonus orbs so you rank up the dragon to plat three get the bonus orbs you summon a duplicate and then it allows you to recall the dragon and so if you do some quick maths on that for 100 orb dragons this means that actually you can endlessly cycle them in theory the reason why I don't actually do this anymore as a player is because it takes far too long. The only dragons that I do orb cycling for include dragons like my Corrupted Legend or any really difficult to get dragons like Legendary VIPs. So definitely the Walking Dead dragons you would do it. Corrupted Legend, Corrupted Chaos, I would do it. Heroic VIPs, you would rank them up but you can't orb cycle them. Um, and anyway, so I would do it for those dragons, but any dragons that are 200 orbs, of course, you can't actually do it. I'm talking about like what I did and what I would do if they were 100 orbs, but any other 100 orb dragons, you can orb cycle them in theory, but they take so long to actually, you know, rank up, recall, and then you're going to have to resummon one to then rank up again. And personally, I after doing it for many many months as a new player for a tiny marginal gain i don't actually think it's worth the effort for 95 percent of the dragons but just be aware that it does exist and it can get you some extra orbs for certain dragons but most of the dragons that you'd want to do this on are going to be 200 orbs anyway so it doesn't really help for the legendary vips regardless but as long as you know that it exists as a concept you can do it for regular dragons as well but it's not going to be the end of the day but this does go through pretty much everything that you need to know about it in the text file so there's also rank looping that is mentioned here which i don't actually like it's it is pinned there but i don't agree with it myself so i'm not going to go through that and then this is the list I was talking about, so we should probably unpin the other one because this is a more updated list. And, you know, we can always do that. We can unpin things. We can repin other ones. And these are all posted by other server members and stuff like that. But this list here talks about the various dragons and what their abbreviations are, which does confuse a lot of people. So VIP equals a premium dragon with skills, abilities, whatever you want to call them. LVIP is legendary VIP. MVIP is mythical VIP. HVIP, heroic VIP. And then these are pretty much like all of the heroic VIP dragons. TWD is the walking dead. So that includes dragons like Michonne like I just mentioned not too long ago. Jewels is Perception, Prescription, Parliament. Uh, Cosmic Detonation or Seed Dito is this dragon right here. Cosmic Detonation. Uh, so it's typically dragons that people talk about a lot and they've got really long names and people don't want to say them. 
If you're a new player and you have no idea what people are abbreviating, this is a very handy list for you to have a look at. We are getting to the very top of this list here with two more pages. Uh, this one I would highly recommend that you use, and I have gone through this before, but just in case you weren't there for it, this is actually a direct link to the Dragon City competitive wiki page. And although some of the information is slightly wrong about this, most of it will give you a general idea about what every single one of the skill skins do. And so, for instance, we have the heroic skins on this page that goes through all of the heroic skill skins, the benefits they give, how much extra damage, categories of the dragons. So like the gamma skin, it shows you them here in case you don't know what they do and you want to know what they do. And this page here, it also takes you through what each of the mythical and legendary skill skins do also. So if you go onto this heroic page and then you click on the, the bit that I just did there, then you'll be able to see the mythical skill skins and then the legendary skill skins. You can open those up. You can then go, okay, what do all the mythical skins do? And then you can go and read through all of them and you, well, those are legends and then the mythical ones are here. So then you can scroll down and read what all the mythical ones do for like perma wound, for like deadlock. So this is incredibly useful information in case you manage to get a skill skin for yourself or you want to go for one, whether you pay for it or you get it for free. So I really, really like using this Dragon City Competitive List wiki website. Very, very handy indeed. And then the final one that we've got here is pretty much the same as what we've seen before, which is just a different version of uh, I guess showing you the time frames, the empowerment start and the orbs required for both legend and heroic. It is pretty much identical apart from the timer, which changes the amount of gems needed to empower. So it's just a different way of looking at all of that information. So might take one of those off since we already have it pinned here. But the other resources that we have are typically going to be in the DC event guide section. So like we've got the island costs here for each of the islands. So how much every single island costs. We've got the link to the Dragon City heroic races and anything else that might be useful in general. But all of the latest event guides, maps and everything like that get posted here. So this should just be a general event specific resource for you also. But anyway, that was a lot of information to go through and that is not everything that you should know or will know about this game eventually if you keep playing. Uh, there are lots of little tidbits of information. Heroic races, I create specific guides for those because they are a whole different ballpark in themselves. Other events like tower events are very basic, but I've made guides on every single event type in the game and they just repeat. So there's not really too much else I need to tell you about those because I've already made videos on all of those before. But just in terms of little tidbits of information, I think that those were some really handy resources. But of course, if there's ever anything else you need, just ask or ask inside the Discord server specifically, like the Dragon City chat section. Um, it might not be active every single time that we go there and people could be talking about literally any weird old thing about the game, but uh, having these resources around you will definitely help to make some sense of things, especially if you're new, which was something that when I started playing, I genuinely felt like was lacking quite a lot, both in the game and from the official sources. So we've got some stuff there, but if there's anything that you think we've missed or there's anything else that needs to be pinned for a quick access, let me know. Also, we've got our lovely destroyer here. I mean, there's also lots of information regarding like the different collections, what each of the mythicals do, what each of the skills are for every single dragon, you know, all that sort of thing. Uh, but that's a separate video in itself because we've got so many unique skills these days. We've got our lovely, lovely extractors, which are pretty much useless, which it's a lot of stuff to know, but that's for a separate time and a separate day. But anyhow, I hope that that all made sense and those resources can be useful to you. But again, all of them are linked and pinned in the server. So you can see all of them whenever you need to. But I've used pretty much all of these myself at one point or another. If I hadn't, I wouldn't be pinning them. So anyway, I hope that that was like a little uh, encyclopedia on things to know for anyone that's either new, returning or just wanted to make sure that they weren't missing anything. So anyway, hope it helped.